Hi, I'm Stu, and welcome back to another LumaFusion video tutorial. I'm old enough to remember seeing the original Superman from 1978 starring Christopher Reeve, and while James Gunn's new version is making waves at the box office right here, I thought it'd be fun to take a look back at the original title sequence, we create a small segment as a little homage to Reeve and that classic era of 1970s cinema. Let's get started. I've got a blank new project all set up here. And I want to first of all create a blank clip. I'm going to stretch it out to around about six seconds. And then what we need to do is an overlay clip. So tap on the plus symbol, tap overlay. I'm just going to move it forward, sitting in around about half a second from the beginning. And there we go. Press three on the keyboard, open up our your text here. Go to our text, and I want to type in. Christopher Reeve. People say Reeves, but it's actually Reeve. Choose my font, so select the text. And we're going to want to go for AI Bain, I think you pronounce that, as bold. But obviously, just any kind of bold text will work with this. Once we've done that, tap done, and we'll get into our face color. Now, I'm going to use the hex code for this because I want the blue to be very similar to the blue that they actually used in the titles. So, zero, zero. 9 A F F. I'll get with the blue. Press enter. There we go. And that's our first title layer effectively created. And I'm just going to call this layer 1. And I'm going to put in brackets edge. And you'll see why in a little while. Okay, we now need to make a duplicate layer. So let's just tap on the duplicate option. And this layer we're going to call long zoom. So just get rid of the naming box. I press 5 on the keyboard. Go to our effects. And I like how they've put everything in this sort of one panel now. It really makes sense that way. Now what we're looking for now, long zoom. And there it's there. We tap on that. And you can see the effect that it's actually created. And what I want to do is just pull that back a little bit. Reduce the amount just so you can see the edge of the sort of blur. So we'll bring it down to I think we'll make it an even 25. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to move to the beginning of the clip. What I want to do is set my first keyframe to the beginning. And then I'm going to move things along until we get to around about, say, here. I'm going to drop another keyframe. I'm just going to play with the amount a little bit. And we'll go back to the first keyframe. And I want to set it all the way down to zero. And if we play it through, you can see the animation effect. I think I'll actually reduce that a bit more. So we'll take it down to maybe 20. There we go. If you want to, you can adjust the blue center. And what I want you to pay attention to is the, all the zeros over here, just below the trash can. You want to keep the left hand set of zeros to zero. If you drift left or right, you're basically moving the X axis and you can adjust the Y axis. I'm going to set this at minus 0 0.25 and just have the rays pointing down slightly. So you can see they start off straight and then they kind of work their way down, which is a bit of a stylistic choice. It's up to you whether you actually do this or not. And that's looking good. And what we want to do now is go back to our layer 01. I'm just going to, before we do anything, just call this layer 02, long zoom, brackets like the other one. Here we go. And then back to layer 1. Press 3 on the keyboard to get into the titles. And what we want to do is make sure we copy our hex code 009 double f And we want to go down to edge color. Tap on that. Apply the code there. And then on the face color, we're going to reduce that to 0. So lower the opacity. And then the width, we're going to set to probably 5. And you can see we now have that edge effect. Now, it's personal taste. You could take it down to 4 if you want a little bit of a thinner edge. I'm just going to split the difference and go with 4.5. And that's us now got our first and second layer. So if we play that through. Now, to add to the effect, what we want to do is copy layer 0, 1. So highlight it. Do Command D or tap on the little duplicate icon. And this is our third layer. So we'll set that to layer 03. And then we can get ready to adjust the settings for that layer. So we're going to press 1 on the keyboard. Going to frame and fit. I'm going to set the blending for this duplicate layer to probably 30%. Just get as close as we can and use the arrow keys to get it up to 30. I'm then going to 
go to the very beginning of the clip, apply our first keyframe, and then I'm just going to move into around about a second, let's say 103, drop another keyframe, I'm going to go to our position and size again, drop a keyframe there, move along to around about a second and three frames, drop another keyframe there, and then I'm going to set the size to 104, just slightly larger. So we just check that out, make sure that's working. Yep, I can see that working. I'm now going to go to, let's see, one second and 23, just under the two second mark. Maybe even just go to two seconds. Now we'll go for 123, yeah. We're going to readjust the height. This time I've got this written down. So we're going to take it to 112.1. Press enter. And then what I want to be able to do is adjust the Y axis. And we'll set that to 2.5. Press enter. Now do you see how the long zoom is just bleeding over ever so slightly? We can sort that in a second or two. I'm just going to finish off my keyframes here though. So we'll go to, let's say, two seconds, maybe 17, 16, 17 frames, get rid of it there. And again, I took a note of my size, so I'm going to increase this to 117.3 or 4. Yeah, 3. It's looking pretty good. Play it through. Now that's working, it's just that the bleed off's a little too much. So to sort that, I kind of did this deliberately to be honest with you, just to show that you can go in and play with the settings after the fact. Back into our long zoom, and we're going to reduce the amount. I'm just going to bring it down to, I think about 11. That should line things up. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to come back out and play it through. Yep. That seems to be working. Just getting a little bit long at the end there, so I need to sort that. So back into long zoom. I probably wasn't paying attention to my keyframes. No, I wasn't. So if I go to the last keyframe, make sure it's set to 11, and we get rid of that keyframe. Then we just play it through. It should look a bit more natural, which it is. Good. Sometimes even I get confused with my keyframes. One more play, and that looks pretty good. What we now need to do is export this video as it is. And the only thing we're going to do at the back end of this is just reduce the overall blank clip to five seconds. So it's basically half a second either side of the four second title animation. That looks pretty good. We'll get down to movie, render movie files, change the quality to standard 20 megabits per second, and we render that out. Okay, to finish off this animation homage, I'm going to drag down our render clip, and we're going to add a little bit more movement and sound design. So there's the animation itself. And what I want to do is I want to go to the beginning of the timeline, make sure I'm nestled right up at the edge, add a keyframe, and I'm going to start things by reducing the size, rotating, and then we will move it up to the corner. Come in about there where the blur is really taking hold. Add another keyframe and then reset everything, but then increase the size. And what we then want to do is once we've got this part of the animation dealt with, we want to start just a few frames before the second keyframe. Go to our blending, add a keyframe, and then go just past. It just snaps in place a bit there and then just lower our opacity. It's going to be very quick disappearing. So if we see, and you get the general idea. And if it's just a little bit too fast, go back into your frame and fit, back down to blending, and just press and hold on the keyframe. We can move it along, make sure that's working right. I'm just going to bring that in a little bit further along, and we'll just drop that down. So we've added three keyframes in. I'm just going to move this one in a wee bit so they're kind of equidistant. And then we've got our flying in option. I think I want to continue that rotation as well. So back into frame and fit, let that go to there. I'm going to get rid of that keyframe that's magically appeared. And what I want to do with this is set up a keyframe there. 
and have this rotate in the opposite direction and I'm just going to move the keyframe along and then what I also need to do is increase the zoom and also the overall position and see how that looks yep that's kind of where I want to go just to make it disappear out of the way I'm going to move this along a wee bit and see if that makes any difference move this along a bit yeah that'll do and to finish things off we're going to go to our linked folders and go to Cinephonic Volume 1 down to Wooshies and then we're going to apply I'm thinking number 35 I had a look at loads to choose from Yep, that sounds good. So we'll drag that down. We'll see how it positions. Make it primary audio. Here we go. Yep, that looks good and sounds good. Just trim off the end of it and then I'll add a transition video cut audio cross at the back end for a second. I'm just to really sweeten the deal. Back into our linked folders, we'll come out of Cinephonic Volume 1, go into our Superman setup, and what I'm looking for here is this one. Perfect. I'm probably going to copyright struck for this, but it's worth it. And again, I'm just going to trim things up, add another transition at the back end. There we go. And there's our finished article. I think we might actually extend that past. So there you go. That's our homage to the 1978 title effects for Superman. The OG Superman, Christopher Reeve. I hope you've enjoyed the videos you showed you today. If you have, don't forget to give it a like and share with your friends and family. And I will catch you on the next one. See you later. Introducing Cinephonic Volume 1. The cinematic sound library delivers over 650 high quality sound effects, hits, risers, drones, atmospheres, textures, and so much more. Need train ambience? It's in the subway collection. Designing a reveal? Why not drop in a bram or a bass impact? Everything is royalty free and professionally curated by yours truly and designed to fit your workflow. Instant download, no subscriptions, yours forever, free upgrades. And if you're still not sure yet, download the free sample pack and explore the 35 plus cinematic sounds that you can keep at no cost.